Coming up on Made in Virginia, we're headed to Virginia Beach to see how steel manufactures chainsaws. Then we're headed over to Highland County for something sweet, maple syrup production with Back Creek Farms. All next on Made in Virginia. Production funding for Made in Virginia is made possible in part by the Virginia Foundation for Public Media, supporting public media initiatives throughout Virginia, and by at Atlantic Union Bank, we believe that Maiden Virginia means something special, something unique. After all, Virginia is where tradition meets technology, where hard work combines with innovation, where artisans, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and corporations take business to the next level. We're there every step of the way as champions of Virginia businesses and as a proud supporter of Maiden Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. Steel was founded in 1926 by Andreas Steel. It is known worldwide for its German heritage, but in 1974, Steel established their North American production facility in Virginia Beach. Steel was first attracted to Virginia because of its deep water port access for importing and exporting material. They started by making one chainsaw and now make over 80 products and produce over 4 million units per year. Well, steel's been in Virginia since 1974. Uh, I started out making one chainsaw in a rented building, and then we moved to this site, which was fields, farmland, absolutely nothing here at that point in time. And we have grown over the years um, in this one location with a one manufacturing location in the United States. And we chose Virginia because of a variety of factors, such as the deep water port access that we have here locally, um, the educated workforce we have, especially and um, the access to all our veterans we have locally. Steel employs 2,100 highly skilled workers in the U.S., 1,900 of which are at the Virginia Beach facility. They offer an apprenticeship program and have been developing talent from within for 35 years. Yeah, we have linkages with all different facets, as I said, the military itself, with the universities, but also with the schools. Um, we link in with all the high schools, um, we do uh, a lot of tours, we bring people in just to educate so that people understand what manufacturing really is and how much steel can actually bring to the area and to know that there's not just manufacturing jobs here at steel, there's jobs in finance, sales and marketing, legal, all different aspects of the business. One of the great things about the company itself is that you don't have to leave steel or even leave the area to move on, move up, change careers. You can do all of that in this one building. Steel prides itself in using automation to augment their manufacturing process. And when something becomes completely automated, employees are retained for another process. No full-time steel employee has ever lost their job to automation. Steel has over 9,000 independent dealers and exports their products to over 80 countries across the world, including China. We use automation to augment and ensure that we keep competitive in the market and keep jobs in the United States, and that's what I'm all about, um, and keep that manufacturing here in Virginia. And so we, when we have robots and we bring them in-house, everybody understands that it's a corporate philosophy that when we bring automation in, that w nobody loses their job because of that. What happens is employees get retrained, so they get a new skill set. So of course, everybody sees it as a very positive thing. The robot or automation comes in and takes away the repetitive task, and then the employee gets retrained, gets another skill set, and can move on to a different role. Yes, I like it here, Steel. It's, uh, we, a lot of people say, you know, it's a family company or something, but it's very true. Uh, if you look at it, there's a, there's a number of employees who uh, have uh, their mothers worked here, now the, their daughters worked here, their husbands or wives work here. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a real pride thing. And if you're in the Virginia Beach, I say Tidewater area, but the Virginia Beach area, you're wearing a steel shirt, you would not believe how many times you get stopped and say, oh, you work at steel, what a great company. 
Steele is not just the name on the door, there is actually a Mr. Steele, and he comes across um, every year in the first week of October um, to come and see the plant, um, to see the people, to see the products being manufactured here. So when we say that it's a family company, it truly is. Um, the family members are all on the board. There is a Dr. Steele, Mr. Steele's son, who also comes to visit, and they very they are very interested in what goes on here and they truly know everything. From an engineering change to marketing, they completely have their finger on the pulse for the business. And it's great for the employees to see Mr. Steele walking through the plant. It really is a special week. Currently here at Steele, uh, we employ close to 2,000 people. When I started in 1974, we had 36 people and that included office, assembly line, and the warehouse. So you can obviously tell that we've been growing ever since and we plan on continue to grow. Steel started with chainsaw manufacturing, but has expanded their outdoor power equipment brand into trimmers, blowers, edgers, and other outdoor power equipment. They offer both gas and battery powered lines of products. We make all kinds of outdoor power equipment, chainsaws, trimmers, blowers, both gasoline and battery operated equipment, and all kinds of edges, everything that you could imagine from outdoor power equipment. I believe steel is known for the chainsaw, but we've, uh, we've got quite a, a market for a lot of other things now. You know, I think steel, the name is just known for a good product, whether it's a chainsaw, a blower, or a power tool. We take pride in just about everything we build. Sure, we started as a chainsaw company, but uh, everything we build is top of the line. Steel manufactures most of their own product parts on site, including many of the metal components, machining the piston and crankshaft and injection molding the plastic parts. We've taken on piston machining, crankshaft machining. Uh, we do uh, quite a bit of injection molding. <laughs> In 1974, the first injection molding machine was about the size of a sewing machine and everybody's excited when we got it. And now we have probably close to 100 machines in our injection molding. Once the parts have been made, they move to the assembly line. The first step is the serial number is laser etched on the motor housing. The piston is put on the crankshaft. Then the bearing and seals are put on the crankshaft. The manifold is then put on the cylinder. Then the crankshaft assembly is put into the cylinder. The crankshaft cylinder assembly is fastened onto the serialized motor housing. This assembly is then attached to a work carrier. Next, the oil pump and clutch are added. A camera inspects these parts to ensure everything is installed correctly. They then perform an air leak test of the cylinder. Then they install the muffler and fuel tank housing. The flywheel is installed. They install the spark plug. Then they add the handlebar. The ignition module is installed on the chainsaw. Next, the unit is placed in an auto station. The auto station tightens the spark plug, the flywheel nut is torqued down, the screw on the ignition module and clutch are tightened, and everything is torqued to spec. We have uh, what we call some poke yoke systems, and they are a couple different things that we do. We have uh, part bend sensors, okay? And if I'm reaching for a screw or a washer, um, that, that sensor verifies that I picked that part and put it on the unit and it's, it's sequential. So if I'm supposed to grab the nut first and then the washer and the screw, I have to follow those procedures. Um, we also have uh, screwdrivers, uh, applicators that you have to run the screw down. You get the correct torque and once you've run the first screw down, you proceed to the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Those also have to have the correct torques, correct procedures, and then, only then, can you allow the unit to go to the next operator? They then program the ignition module to set the timing of the spark plug. This program is different for each model of chainsaw. They then add the handguard and brake components. Then they install the clutch drum and chain brake band. An auto station performs a leak test of the fuel system looking for fuel leaks and uses a camera to inspect the carburetor manifold for all required parts. Well, the QA on the stations, the way I look at it, there's, there's really two QAs. We have a built-in, 
where a lot of the stations have uh, sensors, screwdrivers that are, say, smart arms, where a screwdriver goes, knows where it's at and puts a, this particular torque or the exact torque in on those stations. Um, if you bypass a procedure, then you can no longer let the unit go to the next operator, okay? Then there's also the back to the human factor, okay? That person building that unit is building it, they know what they're doing, and uh, they're following the procedures and they know if, if something's not right, if something's not right, then that, that awareness is raised. Next, they install the carburetor and filter base for the air filter. They then add the starter assembly and the air filter. They put the plastic shroud on the saw, add the nameplate, and screw the handguard down. Screws are started manually, then torqued in the next auto station. The auto station presses on the nameplate and torques down the starter assembly, and then detaches the chainsaw from the carrier. They then perform a start function test. They adjust the carb, test the brake band and interlock. Then they do an emissions test. Every unit is tested to ensure it meets the customer's expectations at the point of sale. The main difference uh, with the products that we produce out here at Steel compared to our competitors is the fact that we 100% test every product that we make. Um, that unit is put into a test cell. Uh, the performance, uh, the quality, and reliability is built into that unit. So you as a customer, when you get it in your hands, is going to be uh, a top of the line unit. They check the limiter caps on the carb. They then add the warning and emissions labels. Then, the chain adjuster and clutch drum retaining clip are installed. Then, the bumper spike and sprocket cover are put into place. Then, unit labels are added. They do their final inspection and check to make sure all the labels are in place, no cosmetic issues are present, and that the unit functions as designed. The chainsaw is put on the conveyor belt and sent over for packaging. Here, the chainsaw is boxed with a combination wrench, orange screwdriver, instructions, the chain and bar with scabbard. Finally, the box is weighed to make sure no item is missing and is shipped out to the customer. Steel chose Virginia Beach because of the business-friendly atmosphere, location to international shipping with the port, and the high-quality workforce. Well, apart from the excellent workforce that we have access to and the deep water port that we have, Virginia is very business-friendly, um, which obviously is, is great for Steel. And uh, who wouldn't want to live in, in Virginia, specifically in Hampton Roads? Virginia is a great place to run a business, um, for especially, you know, Virginia encourages um, businesses to come to the area and they support them very well. And uh, just the landscape itself, especially in Virginia Beach with the ports available to us and uh, just the style of living in Virginia, in Virginia Beach in particular, is uh, just really a good place to live and a good place to work. Um, as far as for Virginia Beach, for steel, um, it is a great place for us to be because it, the Virginia Beach area is a uh, military and uh, we have a great pool of people to pull from, whether they're retired or they're just getting out of the military. We have a strong, educated group of trained people coming to us already. Steel's Virginia Beach manufacturing facility is the largest in the steel group. Steel continues to innovate their products and processes to deliver the best quality outdoor power equipment to their customers in the United States and around the world. Here in Virginia Beach, we are the largest manufacturing site within the whole steel group. So how important is it? It's most stream, extremely important to the group. Um, as I said, we make over 4 million units a year in this facility. And regardless of what happens economically within the US, the steel family truly believes on keeping manufacturing as close as possible to the market. And that ensures that we remain here in Virginia for the future. Now, we're headed over to Highland County, also known by the nickname Virginia's Little Switzerland because of its steep mountains and valleys. It is one of the southernmost regions in the United States that can produce commercial maple syrup. Back Creek Farms is located in the beautiful Back Creek Valley of Highland County, Virginia. 
Making maple syrup has always been a way of life on Back Creek Farms. They use trees on farms that have been producing maple syrup since the 1800s and now produce up to 400 gallons of maple syrup per year. My grandfather made it, who is my dad's father, and we still have some of the buckets. His wife's last name was Paige, and Paige was a big family about another mile up the road. And we still have some of the buckets that the Page family had, which would be well over 100 years old. Um, so we, at our house, we had some sugar trees, and I was just fascinated with the thought of making maple syrup. We did our first little sugar house. We made our furnace out of a um, old chimney out of an old house up the road used a old Model T car frame for the frame and you'd set the pan down in it, that pan sitting right out there, and we'd make a few gallons of syrup. We was never into it to sell much, but if you had a gallon or two to sell, it was always nice. But So it went from 40 gallons a year to 400 a year. And now we open, I think it's at seven different farms. We're called Back Creek Farms because we have the farm right next to us. We have this farm, which was my godparents' farm when I was growing up. We have our farm, we have the Gilmore farm, and we're the only one on Back Creek that does it, so we're now Back Creek Farms. And that's where the name came from. And, uh, just, um, just evolved, and I just, like I said, it's a labor of love, it's hard work, but we love it. Back Creek Farms sells their maple syrup at markets, festivals, wholesale to small retailers, and through their online store. Over the years, they have developed infusion flavors of maple syrup that include spiced elderberry, chili pepper, lavender, cardamom, and coffee amaretto. In 2017, they began a new tradition by aging their maple syrup in barrels used for bourbon, rye, wheat whiskey, and brandy. Blending the flavors of maple syrup and fine spirits opened an amazing new world of deliciousness. These syrups are non-alcoholic, but the flavors are distinctly unique. It tastes, especially when you taste it out of the barrel out here, it is really strong. But I put it in the finishing uh, tank out here, and as that steam is coming off of that syrup, it's basically distilling out. If there's alcohol in it, it's coming out of it. And then all the flavors just kind of meld together. One year, our son-in-law brought us a little bourbon barrel. And unbeknownst to me, Pat filled it with maple syrup and let it sit for several months. Well, one day I walked into the sugar house and I said, what are you doing? Because the entire kitchen smelled like bourbon. And he said, is just sitting there going, here, taste this. And I did, and I thought, oh my goodness. So we put it out there at Maple Festival, our one little five gallon barrel, and it sold instantly. So we knew that we were onto something that people were interested in buying. Um, so we just got more barrels and Tried, tried different flavors. Um, so now we have uh, whiskey, bourbon, and rye flavored syrup, and hopefully next year we'll have brandy again. There is a short window of six to eight weeks to make maple syrup in Virginia. Beginning in February, they start tapping trees. During this time, the temperature has to freeze at night and rise above freezing during the day. At these temperatures, the sap is running as the trees prepare to bud out in new leaves. You get your cold nights and your warm days and they'll start dripping. Uh, 24 inch sugar tree will probably drop about four gallon of sugar water a day, four to five. Uh, my dad used to always say if you had a three foot tree, you should be able to make a gallon of syrup off of it. First, they drill a small hole, making sure it is not near the holes drilled in previous years. They collect sugar water two ways. The first is the traditional way, with spiles and buckets, and the second is through a tubing system from several trees into a collecting tank. Uh, but it's 5 sixteenths bit, and you drill you that little hole in that spile right there. See how that shoulders on it? 
it, you'll drive it in, you'll make your hole about that long, just about a quarter inch past the end of that. Then this goes in, this seals around your hole and doesn't let any air in or out. So everything has to come through the hole. Then once you drill your hole, you just put that in there and you drive that in, you hang your bucket right on that little hook. They tap in the spile and hang a bucket or attach tubing. The number of taps depends on the size of the tree, but they are careful not to over tap their trees and damage this precious resource. Then the sugar water is collected and moved to a holding tank at the sugar house. The sugar water is put through a reverse osmosis machine to remove some of the pure water. Next, two inches of sugar water is then added to the large cooking pan that is heated by a wood fire. Once it starts boiling, they start adding more sugar water and more wood. The sugar water starts at about 2% sugar content and cooks down to maple syrup, which is 66% sugar content. This cooking process takes 24 hours in the open pan. They produce one gallon of maple syrup for every 40 to 50 gallons of sugar water. They use a hydrometer to test the syrup. You just, you boil it and all the steam and everything that's flying off of it is nothing but your water. And what's left behind is the syrup and it concentrates as it gets less and less and less. Then it will come into pure syrup. And we have a hydrometer that we check the density of it to make sure that it's the right, um, right thickness. Once the maple syrup is ready, it is taken off the fire and transferred to the filter press. From there, the syrup is put into storage barrels. Some of Back Creek's maple syrup is then aged in bourbon barrels from Richmond. Other syrup is infused with different flavor profiles. Finally, the maple syrup is reheated in the canner and bottled and ready to be sold and enjoyed. With a population of a little over 2,000, Highland County, Virginia is the least populated county east of the Mississippi River. It has a great abundance of sugar maple trees and the right elevation and temperature to create commercial maple syrup. Highland County depends largely on agritourism and hosts the second largest maple festival in North America every year. Now in its 60th year, the Highland County Maple Festival is held every year on the second and third weekends in March and attracts around 60,000 tourists. This is, was the 61st year of the Highland County Maple Festival. Uh, it's amazing. It's actually the second largest maple festival in North America. Uh, only Vermont, of course, being larger. So it's as I said, a huge boost for the economy. All of the local Virgin clubs, which are the local civic organizations, Lions Club, things like that, everyone has a booth and that's their major moneymaker for the year. So it's really kind of an all out time for the county to uh, have invite guests in. Although there are certainly other times of the year that Highland County is more beautiful than during maple, maple season, but the Maple Festival is a huge draw. Well, Highland County is just so beautiful and it has a lot going for it with the mountains and the creeks and everything. And we do try to take advantage of the agritourism business. We have a cabin that we built that's right next to the, um, the back creek here. And we encourage people that are staying at the cabin to come over here and um, see how the, the maple syrup is produced. And it's really an eye opener for a lot of people um, how it is produced. A lot of people tend to think that maple syrup comes out of trees, and that's definitely not the case. Making maple syrup is a lot of hard work and a labor of love, but Back Creek Farms is up to the challenge and continues to develop new products each year. Pat has been making maple syrup his entire life. He, he started helping his dad when he was about eight years old, and he just loves to make maple syrup. 
And actually there's something very addicting about the smell of it. People will come in and gravitate to the open pan and just inhale. So um, that's a big draw. And then the other thing that I love about maple syrup is it makes people smile. And you give them a taste of maple syrup and they can't help but smile. So that's very gratifying. Back Creek Farms continues the tradition of making maple syrup over a wood fire with the same techniques and methods that were passed down from generation to generation, which gives its syrup a rich, smoky flavor that is totally unique and made only in Virginia. Production funding for Made in Virginia is made possible in part by the Virginia Foundation for Public Media, supporting public media initiatives throughout Virginia. And by at Atlantic Union Bank, we believe that Made in Virginia means something special, something unique. After all, Virginia is where tradition meets technology, where hard work combines with innovation, where artisans, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and corporations take business to the next level. We're there every step of the way as champions of Virginia businesses and as a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting.